Are we good? Hello, my name is Brayden. No, uh, I am an undergraduate at Caltech, and my research will be, or my presentation is on visualizing how asteroids um, deform in the Earth's atmosphere. Now, in 2013, a giant light bulb streaked across a small Russian city of Chelyabinsk. This asteroid did not make it to the ground because it bursted in the atmosphere, but the shock wave has uh, caused 1,500 injuries and 7,000 building damages. Not all asteroids make it to the ground because we have an atmosphere. A general uh, physics of whether an asteroid makes it to the ground is pretty simple. So large ones make it, small ones get destroyed by the air friction in the atmosphere. Now, porosity is a significant factor into determining if the asteroid will make it into the atmosphere. In small solar system objects, um, asteroids have 10 to 60% porosity. And depending on the porosity, uh, the physics of its interaction with air, with, with air changes. And you can obviously guess the higher porosity, um, the higher chance it will not make it to the atmosphere. Now, it's kind of hard to visualize asteroids by photographs because they travel between 10 to 20 kilometers per second, so you wouldn't be able to take photos of them. And if you see them, if you see them coming, you should run away, not take photos. So these, uh, instead, what I did was used uh, this thing called hydrocode. This is a computational simulation by looking at um, cells of each materials. So you can see from here, I have an asteroid, uh, I have an asteroid, I have an air, and I have a ground. And the asteroid is made of granite, and you can choose the density and the speed and the, um, really any, all, the, all the, uh, mat the strength of materials for the asteroid. And my goal was to see how the atmosphere uh, affects the asteroid's uh, uh, shape, so how it deforms it. So what I did was I designed a little cell. So it's a 40, 40 meter out, 40 kilometer altitude. I'm sorry about that. 40 kilometer altitude air, and there's a ground, and I'm I'm striking an asteroid that is um, going at the velocity of 12 kilometers per second, which is around the average of um, asteroid this size, and it's a 100 meter um, diameter. And what I'm doing is I'm comparing um, asteroids. So I'm doing a side-by-side -side comparison between a 20% and a 40% uh, porous asteroid. And you'll see um, that in the next slide. Um, so to visualize the asteroid, I decided to use pressure gradient because you get a sense of the temperature of the, um, the asteroid. And um, the legend of the pressure is set to uh, 10,000 mega pressure, which is 10 giga pressure. So this thing is. Um, the pressure applied to the asteroid is just out of um, conventional uh, mind. So on the right, you'll see a 20% porous asteroid. On the left, you'll see a 40% asteroid going down the Earth's atmosphere. So you can see that um, as it just starts, even the air in the front of the asteroid is applied with a huge um, amount of pressure. So at 40 kilometer, you can kind of see the spherical asteroid that it started with, and it, it is still um, circular. Um, one key difference is that the right side is, uh, has a much more pressure applied to it. Um, that's because it's 20% porous, so it is much heavier asteroid um, coming down the Earth. Now at 30 kilometer altitude, you can kind of see the asteroid is getting flattened. Um, this is called the pancake process, and it's a very um, well-known uh, thing that uh, asteroid researchers know about. Um, and 20 kilometer, you can kind of see the more of the flattening process. And what's interesting is um, the end of each asteroid are um, getting swirled up. Um, this is because the sides are getting thinner, so the strength of material is weaker, and the air is pushing um, the asteroid's material upward. So it has that little um, boomerang, I guess I should call it, shape. And that process can be seen much better at 10 kilometers, just before the impact. And you can almost see this very, uh, very weird, not, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it not conventionally. Um, when, you know, when people think of asteroids hitting the Earth, they think of a circular um, uh, asteroid object, but that's not true for uh, most, ob most asteroids because the atmosphere is giving a huge uh, friction to prevent the asteroid from coll colliding. So why is this important? Well, first of all, I think uh, visualizing how the, the asteroid travels down the Earth's atmosphere is a pretty cool thing to see. Um, second of all, 
most traditional hydrocode simulations use a circular-shaped uh, asteroid. And you can see that the right side is a circular asteroid hitting the Earth, and the left side, I applied the atmosphere variable. And you can see that the ejecta, which is the materials um, coming out of the impact crater, uh, the mechanics is a lot different. So you can see the ejecta distribution is a lot wider. Um, this is because the asteroid has been weakened at the side, and it is a much flatter asteroid, so you can see the ejecta is much wider. And the, also the impact crater shape is also different. So you can see that on the right side, the impact crater is much deeper compared to the left side. It's much shallower and wider. Um, another thing about another useful application is that planets as like Mars don't have atmosphere. Um, so if a same mass and same size asteroid were to hit both Mars and Earth, you will see you will know that we would have a different um, shape impact craters, which is uh, useful for learning, um, you know, researching as researching impact craters. So in conclusion, the asteroid porosity affects the flattening, aka the pancake process, the pancake modeling, and the tailing rate. Um, the atmosphere significantly deforms the asteroid. Um, so you, can, you could see that the 40% porous asteroid had a much uh, faster deforming process. And for this research, I would like to thank um, Dr. Vinerba Agrawar at Auburn University for teaching me how to um, code this hydrocode. And well, thank you so much for the listening to the presentation.